Sup y'all, I'm Marcus, but that's not important right now. Welcome back to the Dark Souls Armor Guide. As always, this guide is merely a reference, and so it's not intended to be watched all the way through just for enjoyment. But, you know, you can if you want. It's, it's, all, it's all up to you, but use the links in the description to find the armor that you are looking for, and you can skip straight to the point. So, let's just get started today. The Hollow Thief set drops off of the Hollow Thieves in the Lower Undead Bird. It's one of the more annoying sets to collect because you need to get three different drop items off of these guys, and they also drop bandit knives and target shields. Uh, but as with all drop items, the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring is highly recommended when going for this drop, and also try to have at least one humanity stock. Uh, having humanity in your, your meter increases your drop rate, but it has sharp diminishing returns too, so... Uh, at least one. Just just try to have at least one unless you're doing an intensive farming session. If you're really having trouble, then having more humanity will help you out. There are only three pieces to this set, and I generally like the way it looks. I've not been commenting much on the amount of protection that the different armors provide so far for two main reasons. Uh, one is that poise and weight tend to trump defense, but the other is that the lighter armor sets tend to not be the ones that you want to choose based on defense. Uh, resistances can be important, but... Uh, these are the sets that you choose for low weight and for fucking sick style, and the Hollow Thief set delivers on that. The Hollow Warrior set is another drop set, and this one is so common that you probably have tons of these without even trying. Uh, it's more or less a weaker but lighter version of the Hollow Soldier set. Still, I personally tend to like the normal looking helmet, so I do use the Hollow Warrior helmet a bit. The Maiden set is a well-hidden set that requires a small leap of faith off a plank in the prison section of the Duke's Archives. This is the set worn by Rhea of Thorland. Now this set really reinforces the idea that Seath's channelers are kidnapping women for him to experiment on. Wearing this set, you don the visage of a maiden, so perhaps you've come to Lordron on a mission to seek kindling and serve the will of the church and the royal family of Thorlin, like Rhea. The Moonlight set is one of the armor sets that you can purchase from Donald of Zinna. Now, before Donald will sell this armor, you need to defeat Dark Sun Gwendolyn. To get to Gwendolyn, you either need to kill the Illusion of Guinevere, which turns an Orlando dark, or equip the Dark Moon Seance Ring in the Dark Moon Tomb. Click the annotation to see how to obtain the Dark Moon Seance Ring. And the location of the Dark Moon Tomb is also shown in the section about collecting the Ring of the Sun's Firstborn in the Rings video. So just click the annotations. If you don't know how to get to the tomb, you don't know how to get the Seance Ring. Just click the annotations. In order to buy boss armors from Donald of Zena, he needs to move to his Firelink Shrine location. Now, I'm not personally sure of the exact trigger, but ringing uh, Quaylog's bell always does the trick for me. If he isn't there, just continue with the story a little bit more. He will definitely be there after Anna Orlando, and that's kind of when it starts to count. So, uh, Donald is a special merchant. He sells the boss armor set. Before you can buy each set from him, however, you have to beat that boss first. So, for example, after beating Gwendolyn, then you can buy the Moonlight set from Donald. The helmet of this set increases the damage that you deal with magic, but it is slightly different from the Crown of Dusk. The Crown of Dusk gives you a bigger damage increase, but it also causes you to take more magic damage. The increase provided by this helm is smaller, but it does not give you a weakness to magic damage. Honestly, I prefer the Crown of Dusk, but it's up to you. But the Moonlight Armor Set is worn by Gwendolyn, 
the youngest son of Lord Gwyn. So if you're wanting to RP, uh, Gwendolyn was raised as a woman due to his natural affinity for the moon, whatever that means. Uh -huh, Gwyn's family had some issues, man. But uh, in any case, if you're into that RP, you are a god of An Orlando in this set. You dwell in the tomb of your father and seek to conceal the truth that An Orlando has fallen to darkness. Also, the Dark Moonblades are at your beck and call. The Painting Guardian set can be found in the Painted World of Ariamis, or Ariamis, Ariamis, Ariamis. I usually say Ariamis, I'm, I can't remember how it's pronounced. It actually is said in game by Priscilla. You need the Peculiar Doll to get here. Use the annotations to navigate if you need help getting to the doll. Uh, the painting is in the Chapel of An Orlando, and touching it will pull you into this world. This set is another one with good curse resistance. Uh, actually, it's a really decent light armor set all around. I like this set a lot. Uh, it's worn by the Painting Guardians, of course, in An Orlando. They've been protecting the Painted World for ages, but the reason why it needs to be protected has long been forgotten. The truth is that the Painted World is a place where many beings and artifacts that were dangerous to the gods have been sealed away. So if you're wearing this set, don't let those filthy hollows, or the servants of Velka for that matter, anywhere near that painting. Ah, the Great Lord set. You can buy this from Mr. Donald of Zena, but only in New Game Plus. So, you need to fuck Gwen up first. Weakness. Parrying. Once again, this is another armor sold by our friend from Zena, so click the annotation for more info. Uh, there's not much to say about this one. It's Gwen's armor. The shadow set is really cool. Uh, it makes you look like a boss ass fucking ninja, but uh, you have to go into Blight Town to get it. So bring Blooming Moss with you to cure toxins, and and you'll be okay. Now from the first bonfire, 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 from the first bonfire, just follow this route carefully, and note that I've already killed the enemies. So just proceed cautiously and take them on one by one. If you're having trouble, just make sure and take it slow. If 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 you block with a good shield, these guys will open themselves up for an easy backstab. But just remember to attack them to stop their grab or move to the side. Anyway, this set's strong points are bleed and poison resistance. From a lore perspective, it is worn by spies from the Eastern Lands, like Shiva's bodyguard. And interestingly enough, there is a dropped plot line in the game where Shiva betrays you. Patches hints at it in his dialogues, and the text dump reinforces the point, uh, which is probably what they were intending to foreshadow in Alvina's dialogues about traitors never being forgiven. Uh, that's just a little note for you lore buffs. It didn't actually make it into the game, and I don't know if it'll be in the DLC either. I, I somehow doubt it, but... Uh, yeah, just an interesting little drop pot plot line there. The final light armor set is the Witch's set. Uh, this set can be found on a corpse in the Valley of the Drakes after you beat the Four Kings. So you need to beat the Four Kings first. Uh, note, you do not have to summon Beatrice to get this set. Uh, but the set did belong to Beatrice, the Rogue Witch. She was one of the rare users of sorcery that did not study at Venheim. And she is also the only other person that we know by name that ventured into the Abyss other than Artorius. So she's a really interesting character. Uh, screenshots from the new content, furthermore, furthermore, <laughs> screenshots from the new content have shown a character in her set using dark magic. So maybe she learned a few tricks in the Abyss. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, that wraps up the light armors. The heavy armors are next. I'm also working on a guide to every weapon, a forging guide, and a final lore guide that covers just fucking everything I know about the game. So uh, I want to be done before the new content is released, but it takes time. And frankly, I want to play some other games too. So I really, really appreciate you guys being patient with me if I upload other stuff. Uh, yeah, later y'all.